You're still watching Plus Politics and we are looking at the infighting within the APC in Oshun State as uh, the state is gearing up for its gubernatorial elections and we're being joined by um, Biodu Shomi. Mr. Shomi, thank you so much for joining us. Apologies for the hiccup uh, in the connections. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the no love lost between um, the former governor and the sitting governor and why uh, this has dragged the party into a, a division that it is experiencing right now. Well, uh, what is clear in Oshun State is that um, you have the former governor wanting to uh, be a, the dominant uh, influence on the current governor. The constitution of APC is very clear. The governor is the leader of the party in the state, um, irrespective of what. But the former governor is also a minister um, at the federal level who is determined to remain relevant in the affairs of the state. So there you have the conflict. Now, you have the supporters of the former governor, Raouf Aregwechola, and uh, the supporters of the incumbent governor and leader of the party in the state, you know, trying to slug it out for a return ticket. Hmm. Uh, it's clear the Aregwechola is not supporting a second term ticket for Oyetola, and the supporters of Oyetola are determined that it should be returned. Now, what I found difficult to understand in all this is the corollary drawn by the Minister for Internal Affairs about what happened in Lagos in relation to Ambody serving one term and then his own desire that Oyetola should also serve one term. I don't think anybody should be in that situation. Nobody should be so powerful to the extent that they can dictate what the electorate should do in terms of the tenure, termination, or elongation of any administration in Nigeria. Mm. I don't think um, that is right. And I think it's at the cross of the present conflict, you know, the former governor wanting to terminate the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the current governor, who is the leader of the party in the state. Mm. And I think that's what the party is all about. But this is not the first time we're seeing this. We've seen that tussle, um, you know, in um, the APC in, uh, I think, Kwara State. We've also seen that tussle in even the PDP uh, in certain states. I think one of the reasons why the governor of Cross River State uh, moved to the APC was because he was having to tussle the leadership of the party with certain other people who were strongmen in the party. So, but this is not mm. necessarily new, is it? Um, but what is the party? The APC keeps saying that they're going about in different states to um, have some re reconciliation of sorts. But how is this, is this being dealt with, especially what's happening in Oshun State now, gearing up uh, for an election? The whole idea is about the continuation of Godfatherism. You see Godfathers wanting to remain in control. You also have new leaders wanting to be godfathers, not necessarily wanting to transform the political landscape of their state, but rather uh, to perpetuate themselves, you know, uh, on, on the people. And one thing which I've learned, you know, from pedagogy of the oppressed is that an oppressed person, when liberated, does not necessarily want the liberation of other oppressed people or to perpetuate his own hegemony over them. Mm. That is the truism of what is going on in our country. Um, you have a situation where the former governor is determined to call the shot and dictate who becomes governor or not. I think that is what the battle is all about. It's certainly going to affect the APC, particularly going towards um, election. Let's but we still don't know. It is too early to tell whether after the primary, the party will pull itself together, resolve their differences, and choose to forge ahead. That remains to be seen. But the speculation that is out there on the street is that a faction that loses out or that is bound to lose out in the battle fortune 
is likely going to team up, you know, with the PDP to ensure that the to try and ensure that the governor does not get re-elected. Hmm. But the fact of the matter is, they made reference to the fact that it took a faction of the PDP, led by Omi Shuri, you know, to ensure that Oyesola was elected. These are still, you know, congestions, you know, and we don't know what would happen. Hmm. We should not forget the fact that Omi Shuri himself has since he said his own position. Hmm. So everything is up in the air. Um, it's unfortunate APC is in crisis, but CDP itself has its own internal crisis. You know, you still have the Adele K stuff mm -hmm. uh, with other party leaders there. So it's too early to call to see to, uh, about the effect of the political wrangling in APC, uh, whether CDP will benefit from it or not. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about what happened um, in um, the primaries of the APC. Uh, this has been on the lips of many. The minister who had in his convoy gunmen who were shooting sporadically in the air. In fact, the tension at that um, governorship primary, some would term it as something that had automatically boiled over. Um, guns were, you know, used. People had to scamper for safety. And the shocking part is that those who were armed were members of the correctional service, which are the prisons, and of course uh, the uh, uh, NSCDC. Uh, it, it's it's very interesting to um, to see this show of power by the minister uh, at the primaries, and many people have queried this action. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the minister is certainly um, legally in control of the. NSCDC. Um, he made allegations to the fact that shots were fired at his bottle case. That may be true or not. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is um, he has made adequate arrangements for his own protection by the Nigerian Civil Defense Corps. But the governor, governor's team, the party itself, APC, you know, should say is alleging that the minister is abusing his office by using the NCCDC, you know, to terrorize um, members of the party the, 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 uh, uh, with the governor. So how, whether that is true or not, I also don't know, because you have this um, issue of Arabe asking that the commissioner for police should be removed, and then you have the APC party leadership, you know, making allegations, you know, against um, Aregbe Shola. I think this is part of the brickmanship, part of the game. It is almost impossible, you know, for the Nigerian police force not to remain neutral mm. in this issue. Because the governor is the chief security officer of the state. And Aregbe Shola is the minister for internal affairs in charge of another security officer. Mm. Mike the feeling is that the Nigerian police force will try and be uh, professional and refuse to get drawn into uh, party politicking by either of the two factions of the APC. Uh, let's talk about um, banding together. In fact, before then, the, the, the government of Oshun State had said that anyone, and I'd quote them directly, irrespective of their office or station, caught disrupting the peace of Oshun will answer to the law. Um, and and um, also the Oshun uh, State Police Command also said that um, uh, well, well, when he was called, apparently, he did not have anything to say. And just as you said, they're trying to stay neutral uh, on this particular matter. But then a senator uh, within the um, um, Oshun APC is calling for some form of, um, you know, reconciliation. They're asking that both parties be reconciled. Do you see any reconciliation in the let's say, um, the next few weeks or in the next um, coming uh, months before the final um, primaries happen? Do you see anybody uh, downing, uh, sheathing their sword and, and embracing peace? I mean, we've seen that happen in Ekiti APC where certain people have stepped back and said, let's walk in the interest of the party. Do we see that also happening in Oshun State, being that these are two strong men? Yes. Um... <laughs> With politicians, anything is possible. 
tomorrow you might find a regular knocking on the doors of Inubu or Oyetola. Is that impossible? That is the way of politics in our country. But in relation to the current uh, political struggle for control of the party and the seat of government, uh, a faction led by Raul Paraguay is already backing Alaji Pataya Adeusi. And Oyetola, you know, enjoys the party, uh, the, 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 the support of the leadership of the recognized party within the state. What I see is that the mathematics, the arithmetic is likely going to favor Oyetola in terms of delegates. Uh, and should that happen, there will be the need for reconciliation. But is it likely that that reconciliation will take place or not? That depends on how the party leadership at the national level handles the situation. Okay. If they don't make efforts to reconcile both of them, you know, through the new reconciliation, not one party calling short and making demand, unreasonable demand. If they fail to do that, then there may be a major problem for it. Okay. But the process of reconciliation is always there with politicians. Mm. You can never, never say no. That politicians can't do anything. They can do anything. They can wake up tomorrow morning and be reconciled. Well, they say no permanent enemies in politics, but um, yeah, interest. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you. Biodo Shomi is a political analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate your thoughts. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, to round up the show tonight, Nigerians are still screaming about their frustrations as regards the fuel scarcity and the long lines at uh, petrol stations. Well, we'll leave you with that. I am Mary Anakon. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. Government should do something to this for scarcity because it cannot continue like this. Because people will suffer for it. People are suffering for it. Things are bad because of that scarcity of fuel. People cannot move to one another to do their own business to do. So if they can do something about it, I travel to OK Mercy on Saturday. There is no NMPC filling station self fuel from Ikodu to Ekiti. Our leader, they know what, 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 what we are in Nigeria is today. We are sleeping with, with fear. We are running on fear. We definitely station on fear. This is not, it's, it's not, it's not supposed to be like that. By now we should be talking about building and restoring our infrastructures. The major one there is the refinery. So if you want to see any sincere government, they have to put our refineries back to workable position. This is unforgiving for all the leaders of Nigeria. We're talking about a nation over 200 million without a refinery. We probably have to go back to the likes of Qatar, to the likes of Dubai. Nations that are on their knees in the early 70s, late 70s, even early 80s, begging us. Drivers find it harder to get petrol, and as a result, bus fares are higher. And also at home, to get petrol for your, for your generator is a bit harder now and more expensive. If we do not import petrol, if we make our petrol, there will probably be way, better ways of ensuring the quality is good. I hope the people here will listen, the people who distribute the fuel, and at least they will do the needful. We don't have to make life difficult for each other. I think they can do better.